So now let's look at the way ODM organizes information. So we had talked earlier about a model when you are setting up a business process manager management, when you're doing business process management, you're creating a model to take some sort of process that you have. Usually we'll have an input and an output and then we'll do some sort of processing here in the middle. And you can conceptually, you can consider this whole thing to just be a model. Now that matters because a model is a conceptual component in the organizational structure of uh, ODM. So you use models in ODM. Those models are composed of decisions. And decisions are really important because they contain our rules. They are composed of a series of rules. So you may have, for example, three rules here. And we had seen from before that a rule might be something like if, and then we have salary. And I'm using blue because we're going to come back to this. This is known as a variable or a parameter. And if salary, and then you give it some threshold, some condition, say $100,000, and you say then. So this would be an example of a rule. And a rule, or a series of rules, gets grouped into something called a set and a set will implement or a series of rules will implement a decision now that's not the only way to group rules another way to group the rules is through something called a group and more specifically it's actually a package and this is the idea of a java package so if you're a little fuzzy on that terminology, go back to a previous video where we talked about packages in IIB. But essentially, packages is a Java concept, whereas projects, which we're also going to see, are is, is an Eclipse idea. It's your IDE. So the these rules are grouped in sets and also packages, and it, it is your policies, your internal policies, that will determine the rules, whichever rules those are. Now, salary is interesting here, as I said, because it is a representation. It's a placeholder. It is what is known as a verbalization. So that just means like plain English version of what is ultimately stored somehow as probably a variable so it may be located it may be called sal amt but if a business user were to look at this he would say what is a sal amt and it's much easier for him to s understand that as a verbalized value or as a a kind of essentially a variable when you set up variables uh, these verbalizations they you do so in what's called a bomb. A bomb is defined here where you'll see it is a business object model. It's the representation of the core concepts of the business and their logical connections. It is the basis for the vocabulary and it's used in business rules. The elements of a bomb map to those of a corresponding execution object model. So this is important because they are you, you will have something called a bomb, and you'll have another thing called a zom. We'll go through this uh, as time goes on. But ultimately, this whole thing is kind of your model, and you represent the model as a zom. And it is the bomb that contains these verbalizations. So let's take a look at what this means um, a little bit more visually. So after you have been working for a while, you'll, you'll inside of the designer, you'll eventually get to something that looks like this. So here you can see a project. This is called my project. There is an R here that's supposed to represent a rule. So this is a rule project is what the, that means. The actual rules themselves, these here, are located in this container and these containers generally are projects so those are Eclipse projects and they will contain as you can see here 
the rules, but specifically the actual if then section of the rule is located here inside this package. And so it's the greetings one here that you'll see there. Now, now interestingly, the verbalization itself is listed here under the bomb, like we had said, and, and even more specifically, it's salary that is listed here. This is not one to one. This is a different example here, but in, a, in this case, you would, this is actually current time is what you'd be seeing here instead of salary, but you get the idea. This would say, this would say salary. Now that is in itself inside a class. That's what the C stands for here. So that's a Java class. And that's a package. So that's your what we had talked about earlier, a Java package. And then you have all of that being held inside the model. Now again, we had talked about that model being listed here. So all of that, of course, is really the bomb that we've been talking about here. So once you put all of those pieces together, hopefully that clears up a little bit the organization that ODM uses. Uh, but before I finish this video, there's one other piece here, and this is called main. Now main is, the way it's drawn here, is supposed to represent a kind of visual representation of what we've been talking about. That is the kind of flow that we've been talking about. And specifically, it would look like this. If you were to double click on it inside of the rule designer, you would get this. And here you have things called a node. This is specifically called the start, the start node. And then you have the end node down here. And these lines are called transitions. So these here are the transitions lines. And then separately, you have the task that you're trying to perform. It's just like we had been drawing before. This would be, you know, the actual work that you're doing as you're trying to model whatever process you have. This is where the nuts and bolts are at for the work you're going to do. And then you'll have this uh, ending node to, to finish it off. And all of that is listed or is stored inside this here, this main, and it goes inside of your rules, which itself goes inside the project.